If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener off here. Vintage is now officially my favorite format. I'm sure you never would have guessed that from all the vintage videos that have been on the channel lately. But it is, and I love to brew, so naturally, here's a vintage brew of mine. This is a Hermit Druid combo deck. Now, Hermit Druid, a little bit of background, this card is banned in Legacy. It is absolutely broken beyond belief. It's a four of in Vintage. It's not even restricted. That's how powerful the format is. This is a two drop, one one, taps for green. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card into your hand and put all other revealed cards into your graveyard. We don't run any basics in our deck, and so this is just going to mill us out. And once we have our entire deck in our graveyard, once we have all of our cards there, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to win the game immediately. Now, I am going to explain some cards that, if you're familiar with Vintage, you're going to know, but I'm assuming that most people watching the channel won't know a lot of these, so pardon me while I explain the cards. For those that are more enfranchised in the format, I'll try not to take too long. Uh, we have Narcomoebus as a four of. Now, as you're milling through the deck, hopefully you'll hit all of these. Not, it's not necessary, but you do probably need to hit at least two. There are other creatures in the deck that can already be out, but ideally you hit some Narcomoebus. So that's great. That's what you're looking for. And by the way, Hermit Druid can activate its ability as soon as turn two. So we're going to try to d win on turn two. Now, once you have Narcomoebus out, you have two Cabal Therapy. Uh, you're not going to actually cast it most of the time, you're going to flash it back, right? Sack a creature, name a non-land card, target player reveals their hand, and discards from it all cards with that name. So, for example, the first time you do it, you might name Force of Will, see their hand, see what they're working with, and then use the second one to name any other problem cards that they might have. Now, again, ideally, since you have one Hermit Druid out and four Narcomoebus, that's one therapy, one therapy, and you still have three other creatures. So what are we going to use those creatures on? And again, you may not hit all four Narcomoebas, but you'll have other creatures in the deck too. Uh, you'll have Dread Return. Good old Dread Return. Uh, flashback, sack three creatures, return target creature card from your graveyard to play. You probably already have an idea of where this is going. What are we going to return? We're getting Laboratory Maniac. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Oh look, we don't have any cards left in our library, so anything that will draw us a card at this point will just win us the game. Now we could pass turn and then it gets passed back to us and we win, but we have a lot of ways to just simply draw, and we'll get to those in just a moment. First I'd like to explain some of the other creatures. We have another card that's banned in Legacy and banned in Modern, but unrestricted in Vintage. Good old Deathrite Shaman, our one-mana Planeswalker. It ramps us, it deals with the graveyard, it's an alternate win condition. This is a great card. I'm a little bit surprised it doesn't see more play in Vintage, but it loses to Mental Misstep and it can be a little slow. So I guess that's fair enough. Uh, next we have Leovold Emissary of Trest. And fair decks in the format kind of can't beat this card, so each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So they get to draw one on your turn, one on their turn, that's it. And whenever you or permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. So yes, this even works on Strip Mine and Wasteland. So that seems pretty good. It's expensive and it's legendary, so I'm only running three. But yes, if you can make it, if you can stick it, then fair opponents kind of just can't win at that point. And then we have one Snapcaster Mage, just blue Doom Blade that gets back any of the cards you're about to see in just a bit. <laughs> I'm about to go through something like 20 inclusions, and Snapcaster will work on all of them. So it's just utility, and it also serves as an alternate win condition as well. Now, as for drawing cards, we have another Banned in Legacy, Banned in Modern, but this one's Restricted in Vintage. Oh, and also recently Banned in Popper. Good old Getaxian Probe. Look at target player's hand, draw a card. So you can see if the coast is clear as well. Uh, then we have another card in exactly the same boat, except it was never legal in Modern to begin with, but Rip Gush in Popper. I used to run this thing in Popper, so, uh, Rip. But yeah, uh, return two islands instead of paying its mana cost, draw two cards. 
little broken. Shoutouts to Stephen Menendian, who literally wrote the book on Gush. I, I know people use literally figuratively nowadays, but no, he literally wrote the book on Gush. It's called Understanding Gush. Go check it out. Not sponsored. He's a cool dude. Then we have Ancestral Recall, which... Yeah. <laughs> One mana, draw three cards. Yeah. <laughs> then Brainstorm. Of course. And then Ponder. Of course. <laughs> we have enough fetch lands that we can easily turn on either one of these. And then we have four Preordains, because of course we're a combo deck looking for a combo. Makes sense. Guild Scry 2, draw a card. One mana. We can go cruising for a bruising with Treasure Cruise. So yes, once we've milled our entire deck, this is just one mana, draw three cards. But we fell our graveyard so quickly, we can just do this in the mid-game as well. That's pretty cool, <laughs> and it can't be misdirected and all that jazz. Now here's maybe the weirdest one. Shout out to LSV for this, this story. Uh, he kind of inspired me to put this card in the deck. Uh, this is Deep Analysis. So ignore this, you're probably not casting it for its full cost. It's a sorcery, target player draws two cards, its flashback is one blue, pay three life. So one in blue, pay three life. Now the reason that this matters is when you go to mill your deck, you'd like to win on the spot. You'd like to win on the turn you get the Laboratory Maniac out. But what if somehow you don't have any of these in your hand? But lo and behold, if you have deep analysis in your graveyard, <laughs> then you can just flash it back. So it means you need to have any of these or not have this in your hand. <laughs> any of these in your hand or not have this in your hand and you're solid, you're set. So it's very hard to not draw once you have the Maniac out. And this is a really good card. I say there's a story, there's a good old LSV story where he forgets to put Tendrils of Agony in his sideboard, his burning sideboard, and he has deep analysis instead. So shout outs to you for that LSV. You're, you're a cool dude. Next, we have our interaction pieces. Oh, so, of course, we're going to be running four Force of Will. As you do, we'd like to not lose the game. And this is a really good card at not losing the game. Next, we have Mental Misstep. Now, this is only a three of, and to be fair, it could and maybe should be more. It maybe should be four. Uh, because one of the ways that we lose is Graph Digger's Cage, which is already in so many sideboards. It deals with Dredge, it deals with Oath. And so maybe having a fourth mental misstep makes it less likely that the Graft Digger's Cage resolves. And also it's just really good against other blue decks. It doesn't work against shops though, it does very, very little against Dredge, and basically nothing. And I'm not as worried about the graveyard because you may notice, despite having this graveyard combo, we can just win off of a fair beatdown plan. It's possible to do it with Deathrite Shaman and Leovold and Snapcaster, and I've done it before. Nevertheless, maybe that should be four. Time walk, because two mana take an extra turn is <laughs> pretty good, so I hear. We have Demonic Tutor, two mana, go get whatever you'd like, <laughs> just whatever, everything. We have Sylvan Library, so two mana, every upkeep, you get a look at the top three cards, and you can draw up to three cards. Uh, if you, For each one you draw over one, you have to pay four life in order to do so. But otherwise, you can just put them back in any order. So it's Miri's Guile with an upside for one more mana. And that's pretty good. That's uh, against decks that aren't going to be beating us down, that aren't pressuring our life total. That's two mana, draw four cards, and get to stack your deck from, from then on. Uh, and then we have one Abrupt Decay, just to deal with problem permanents that we can't win through normally or have a hard time winning through. Again, we can beat Graft Digger's Cage, but this is an uncounterable way to stop it. Now, this could be Assassin's Trophy, because Assassin's Trophy will deal with Leyline of the Void. However, of course, that can be countered. So, I'm going with Abrupt Decay. I don't see a lot of Leyline in the main board. That you feel free to disagree. It may very well be right to have Assassin's Trophy there instead. Now, next, we have, I'm just going to put them all together here, Black Lotus and the Moxen. So because we're a bug deck, a Sultai deck, we're just running Emerald, Jet, Sapphire. And Black Lotus, as you do, keep all of them here together, our artifact mana, our mana rocks. And we aren't running any of the other colors or something like Soul Ring, because we have so many cards like Leovold that are 
that don't have colorless mana, so I can't really use them there. Uh, even something like Treasure Cruise, it'll get down to one mana, you get the idea. They, they don't do enough. And then we have a whole lot of, of lands. We have one Bayou, three Tropical Island as the most important dual land in the deck, two Underground Seas, and then we have eight Fetch Lands. We have three Misty Rainforest, two Polluted Delta, and three Verdant Catacombs. Now it's not particularly important what the configuration of these you use happens to be, but you do need to use these three because you have well, th there's no color that all of these share, unfortunately. This is two of them, this is two of them, this is two of them. So it's important to have those, although you can change the numbers however you'd like. And that makes sense, playing around, say, like Sorcerer's Spyglass, for instance. You know, put them all together. And then we get to the sideboard. Now the sideboard is... weird. I don't have anything for other blue decks, with the exception of Paradoxical Storm. Uh, and the reason is because I think we're decently set, actually, to begin with. Uh, but we do have a lot for shop. So we have Energy Flux as a 4 up, which is probably excessive. Maybe some number of these should be Hercules Recall, it's one mana cheaper. But this is so hard for those decks to beat. If you can stick an Energy Flux, you kind of just win the game. So I'm going all in on that. We also have Null Rod. So we are way in on dealing with shops. We can beat Null Rod. We only have four cards and stops. Um, but it's so it's very asymmetric when we play it, as you can see. And Paradoxical Outcome needs to have another win con. They need to have something to get by it, uh, whereas we just do not care. Now, for Graveyard Hate, we cannot run Grafdaker's Cage because we need our own graveyard. We need to reanimate cards ourselves. So given that we can't, we run Nile Spellbomb, which could be something else. It could be something like Tormod's Crypt, it could be... I don't want to run Relic of Progenis, of course, because Nile Spellbomb is only target player's graveyard. I don't want to hit everyone's graveyard. Um, and it also has the ability to tap for no mana extra, so you play it for one, tap it immediately, you won't get to draw a card, but it, at that point it's kind of just a bad Tormod's Crypt, and sometimes that's what you need. And it's only three of. We have four Ravenous Traps. Just something to do against Dredge that's free. So even if they're on the play, we can do some shenanigans. Uh, and it d lets us not have to hold mana up. So it's nice. It's really nice. Uh, consider some number of Leyline of the Void, perhaps. Consider <laughs> City in a Bottle. I love that card. That's hilarious. And that's this deck. Uh, now, there is a change that I could make. And feel free to disagree, but one thing that you could do nowadays... Lavinia Azorius Renegade is a card. L Lavinia costs blue-white. There are some black cards in the deck that aren't strictly necessary. You don't have to have Leovold, Demonic Tutor, Abrupt Decay. And those are the only black cards that you're... I mean, there's Cabal Therapy, but you're flashing that back most of the time. You lose the ability to hardcast it. You, you never hardcast Red Return. Um, and so you maybe keep one Underground Sea for Deathrite Shaman, but you could put Lavinia in the deck. So maybe take out three Leovold, Abrupt Decay, Demonic Tutor, and put in four Lavinia, Azorius Renegade, and maybe what? Swords to Plowshares? Maybe the fourth Mental Misstep? Something like that. You can, you can go that way, and that's not a bad thing. Lavinia stops a lot of decks in their tracks. And Lavinia is asymmetric too, like Leovold. Uh, you can also try to go a four-color mid-range version, where you can have cards like Lavinia and Leovold in the same deck. That taxes the mana base a bit, and I'm not sure what concessions I'd be willing to make in order to make that happen. You may be able to find something that I don't, in which case, please leave them in the comments below. Go check that out. I actually read the comments. I'm not that big of a channel. So yeah, absolutely, let me know. And that's it for now. Take care, Magic Community. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.